Hey, I'm Joe DiGiulio. I'm back here at DiGiulio Studios. Today we're going to finish off this painting we did in an earlier episode, and I'm going to show you some proper acrylic varnishing techniques and how to finish it the professional way. Uh, to get started, I want to talk quickly about the anatomy of a painting. I want to talk about the different layers that make up a good painting so you understand the process. First of all, you have the blank canvas. It is raw canvas, and we need something to let the paint hold on to the canvas. That's why we use a gesso. A gesso is an acrylic binder, usually has titanium white in it, so it'll make a bright rebounding of color. But you'll have the layer of canvas, then you have the gesso, the gesso dries and makes all the colors on the next layer, the paint film, which is the application of acrylic color onto the surface. And that's where we're at right now. We have the painting completed with the raw canvas, the gesso applied, and the paint adhered to the gesso. Now we need to finish it and protect it from the outside elements. So how we're going to do that is with varnish. Two kinds of varnish. One is water-based and permanent. The other is solvent-based and removable. What I do is I mix two products together, in this case, a matte medium and a gloss medium in varnish. I use Liquitex. When I put them together, I make what is called the recipe. What the recipe does, it allows me, instead of getting a matte or gloss finish, it allows me to get a nice satin finish. It has a subtle sheen to it, but it will make it so that it doesn't look chalky and cheap. You see, the color right now is somewhat chalky in nature. With the application of the, of the medium here, we are using the recipe. I can apply it. I use a soft brush. I like a white nylon brush specifically for the application of my isolation coat. What is an isolation coat? Think of it as the barrier cream between the paint film underneath and the outside world. The world is full of pollutants. If your artwork is in a public place, such as a hospital, an airport, it's going to get polluted with the different things that happen there. Uh, in a bar, smoke, well, I guess you don't smoke very much in, the, in this world, but those pollutants can actually attach to the painting because when the painting dries, it can sometimes have little pock marks in it if you look at it microscopically. And what I mean by that is that there's little kind of craters. So what will happen is dirt and dust will catch over those craters over a amount of over a period of time and actually dirty the painting. So what we do is we put an isolation coat that is water-based and when it dries, it's permanent. It will not be removed. That will be the permanent seal between the paint body itself and the outside world. But the thing is, I want to be able to clean it. And if I'm using these mediums and varnishes as a top coat or an isolation coat, then what happens over time is that will get dirty itself. So I need to protect it as well. Again, I think of this varnish as a barrier cream, but you see, I'm using the mixture of varnish and medium. It's not a pure varnish. This is just a thickener. And it does two things. It protects the paint film underneath but it also thickens the layer of painting. When you thicken the paint layer, it allows when light comes through there and rebounds, it will actually make the tones underneath much more richer and vivid. The thicker the layer, the more vivid they'll be. So I want to create some impact with color, and so I will apply this coat. And don't forget to do your sides and edges, okay? So I'll just go right along the side. Well, someone said, well, how do you put it on there without getting uh, the paint all over everything? Well, one guy I know actually put push pins underneath it, so it, it allowed the canvas to be off the surface a little bit and allows him to get his brush along the sides without getting it all a mess all over your counter or top or kitchen, wherever you're painting at. Thank God if you've got a studio like I do. 
Okay. Now that is the first one. I do horizontal, then vertical, and then I come back and some excess, especially like around my three dots, which you know stands for me, my wife, and my son. I like to remove that buildup, and I just kind of lightly work around it. That's why I want a soft, flexible nylon brush. I don't want a white, coarse bristle brush because that will actually lend itself to making streaks in the varnish. All right, now that that is pretty much applied, I will let this sit. Okay, I'm going to let it sit, and what I'll do is I will come back, and I'll do that same process three times. I'll need to wait about 15 minutes to a half hour because it dries very quickly, these uh, acrylic top coats. So they, that is the varnish or isolation coat that is non-removable. These water-based ones, when they dry, the acrylic resin adheres and seals the painting and cannot be removed. So, how do we protect it? What they came up with, over on this side, whether it's an aerosol or it's in a can, it is a mineral spirits based varnish. Why mineral spirits? Because the solvent based varnish can be removed with the MSA solvent, or what MS is basically mineral spirits. So a solvent-based varnish can be put down as a top coat. And 10 years from now, when it gets dirty and dingy, they can use mineral spirits to go back over and remove that top layer. Here's the kicker. The isolation coat we put on before seals the painting so that when the person is removing that top layer of varnish, they don't take the paint away. And that is the key thing. Raw canvas, the gesso, the painting itself, the recipe, three coats of that. The, that is the matte and gloss medium because I prefer satin. And then after that, I will let it sit maybe a week to 10 days to let it totally chemically bond. Once that's done, I'm going to use an MSA varnish, they come in gloss, matte, or in this case, satin by Golden, or a Soluvar, which is a spray, or you can get it in a jug by Liquitex, they're all the same thing. These are also are all solvent-based varnishes that when they are dry and you've applied them either by spray or brush, you let them dry, you're going to wait a few hours for that to dry, and then they're ready to go to be hung in the museum. They're there for 20 years. The conservator will take it down off the wall. He pulls out his solvent. He puts that on the top surface. It removes the removable varnish because they say it's the final and removable. That's the key when you go to the store. If it says final varnish or removable varnish, that's your final top coat that you're going to be able to take off with the mineral spirits down the road getting you back to that clean surface that we started with, with the isolation coat, and allow you to apply a new, clean, solvent-based top coat over it again. That way the paintings will be clean and left for hundreds of years, if, if that. Therefore, in the end, way before, uh, way after I'm gone, uh, the painting hopefully will be passed on rather than tossed out. So when you're doing your paintings, consider using a final solvent-based varnish as your top layer of the anatomy of your painting. And with that, I want you to know I'm Joe DiGiulio. This is DiGiulio Studios. I hope you enjoyed this quick little excerpt on tips and techniques for varnishing. If you like what I saw, hopefully you'll subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.